Hello world, what's up guys? This is Dave Van Onken with the Fight Bananas Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? Okay, pack show, like always. Uh, we're going to get into it. We have David Arvello coming on the show, Sucker Punch, uh, agent extraordinaire. Talk to him about the MMA game and so much more. Uh, guys, we just saw this Bellator show. At the end of the year, Rampage and Fedor, uh, it was kind of like a Bellator versus Ryzen. So, of course, we're going to discuss it. What happens if Bellator in 2020 would go against the UFC? What would the card look like? Uh, what kind of matchups can you think of? What do we think of, right? All right, so we're going to talk about that. Of course, guys, it's here. 2020, Connor versus Cowboy, the first pay-per-view of the year. UFC 246, we're going to see it. Connor, the notorious McGregor, back inside the octagon and so much more like i say david arvello is about to come on the fight bananas podcast but guys before david arvello comes on the show let's check out warhammerfightwear.com you can check them out on the amazon app or just go on warhammerfightwear.com guys they got so much gear for the ladies the kids and us men also they have backpacks stickers mugs and anything in between guys check out WarhammerFightWear.com. All right, guys, coming on the Fight Bananas Hotline, my main man, Sucker Punch Entertainment, David Arvello. How you doing, my man? I'm good, brother. How you doing tonight? Dude, man, we're killing it. We're killing it. We're grinding. We're grinding. We know you are, as always. Uh, how's life in your world? Uh, good, good. Just, uh, you know, had a nice uh, holiday with the family, kind of. Yes, you know, it was pretty pretty exhausted. Got got a little <laughs> under the weather for a little bit, but uh, got got some good rest this weekend. And you know, looking forward to getting into this next week. It's uh, you know, uh, this is something where there's, there's no real slow season. There's no real off time. It's just uh, year round. Oh, twenty four seven. All day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day. And it's, it's crazy, my man. It's like, seems like the holidays, you should get more rest, but it seems, seems somehow it gets busier. Uh, life is busier, family's busier, and then all of a sudden, you know, yeah, agents and you know, customers and all this stuff still want to talk to you. So it's just, it's nonstop, like you said, 24 7. But, yeah. um, cool, man. Let's get into you. Um, definitely throw out, um, what you're doing. Uh, you know, let's throw out some of the people, uh, Sucker Punch Entertainment. Um, psh, big fan of you. And, uh, just, yeah, bring the uh, people to the Fight Bananas community what you do and, uh, who you work for. Sure. So, uh, I'm, I work for Sucker Punch Entertainment. We're one of the, uh, you know, biggest, uh, fighter management companies out there. There's, you know, several other, you know, very large agencies that are all, um, you know, very, uh, very good at well-developed rosters and champions. And a lot of the high-level organizations, you know, you have, you know, us at Sucker Punch. You know, you've got, you know, First Round and, uh, you know, Iridium and, one, you know, Janus Sports and one or two other companies that kind of have, I guess, the lion's share of all of your upper-level talent. But, um, you know, a, a big part of uh, a little bit of what sets us apart is that uh, we actually build up a lot of our people from the ground up. Oh, I come right. from a regional promotional background first. So does Brian Hamper um, and, uh, you know, Brian Butler back in the day, too. You know, he kind of did grassroots stuff before he got into fighter management on the promotional side. But, um, you know, we, we, we work with a lot of guys. Like, you've interviewed Chase Boutwell and stuff before. I, I really think he's one of, if not the best amateur bantamweight prospect coming up in the country. Um, you know, who's jumped into the pro ranks this year. And, you know, we work with a lot of other, you know, clients as well. But, you know, for us, it's just not about the big shows and stuff. It's all just about helping the, uh, you know, talent of, you know, next year and two years, three years and five years from now. Right. Develop, right. you know. Right. Um, you you nailed on something I kind of want to jump in right away with. Um, sure. For, for sure, Florida, uh, to me, has had a tremendous uh, regional scene, especially in this last year or two. It's just been on fire. Uh, island fights. Titan FC and Combat Night and other regional shows, right? Um, mm -hmm. How important is it to, like you said, to get in the regional scenes and find these fighters? Uh, you're from Richmond, Virginia, right? Yeah, yep. I'm originally from New York. Uh, okay. Then I moved down to Virginia in high school and uh, went to Fort Union Military Academy here, about an hour and change west of Richmond. Right, uh, right Then right. went to college, you know, here in Virginia and just uh, moved to uh, Richmond, Virginia after that for uh, start some grad school. And then 
once I came here, fell in love with it, and I'm I'm not leaving. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, how vital is it to literally have the pulse of the regional scene, see these fighters, uh, you know, female or male, and to kind of get them before they are, you know, seventeen and two in the UFC, and they're like you said, they're already wrapped up. Uh, how vital is it to be on that regional scene circuit? Uh, I think it's important for a, a lot of reasons. I mean, one, you know, you see, you know, good talent, you know, obviously before. You know, I mean, I guess some people might think, you know, okay, like, you know, you wait until a guy gets to a certain point and, you know, his record gets, you know, up to, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten wins, you know, no losses, maybe one or two, just depending. And then you sign him and get him a fight and then hope, you know, you can get him into a bigger show. And don't get me wrong, that works sometimes. Uh, cool. But I've always been of the opinion that, there are plenty of guys who have talent. And I mean, you've seen it down in Florida and in plenty of other places too, that absolutely have the talent to potentially get to and even do well and hang on in a big show and, and stick around for a long time. But some guys get waylaid very early in their careers, just taking crazy fights and, right, right. Um, you know, they're just, you know, they're two and zero, oh and they fight some dude who's 10 and one and, um, you know, things don't go as planned. Um, you know, stuff like that, but uh, you know, I think for us, it's just like to to be able to have a good beat on what's going on on the regional scene and who's coming up where. You know, it helps for both identifying prospects as well as just um, you know promotional stuff, and then uh, you know also being aware of just when certain guys' names come across as opponents for our guys. You know, odds are like you know Hamper and I, we watch a ton of tape, we watch everything pretty much, so. You know, a lot of guys that come across, you know, we're familiar with them already. So, you know, right. we're kind of a little bit better informed as to, you know, okay, hey, yes, that's a good opponent or no, it's not, you know, and here's why. Um, I think it's really important. Uh, it's, just, it's just there's a lot of the sports so much bigger now. Um, you know, every state kind of contracts and then expands again as far as promotions. You have a bunch for a while, then some go out of business, particularly in Florida. There's a lot that have come and gone. And right, right. I think people have gone in and uh, tried to make a big splash and uh, spend sometimes obscene amounts of money doing very questionable things, um, you know, trying to spend their way into success on the promotional side of things. Whereas like on, the regional scene that that's not always the best strategy uh it actually barely works if ever um but i i, I think now uh you know i think there's something in the water in florida that's caused people to do that many times over the years but at the same time i think you've now got some consistency you've got a lot of good shows in florida you know obviously the island fights you know with dean and stuff i mean he's a long time very successful promoter you know knows the game both on the boxing side of things and in mma um it's one of my favorite guys to work with, really. Then, um, you know, you've got Titan FC, you know, Lex and Jeff, you know, down in South Florida. They're, they've been doing great things down there for a long time. And you've got Combat Night, and, you know, XFN. They're, they've both been mainstays down there for a long time, too. So, you know, I think that Florida now, more than it maybe has in years past, has a lot more consistency. Um, you know, and even you've got Combat Quest down in the Tampa area that's, right. you know, been doing some shows and, kind of breathe some life into a scene that was for a long time kind of just uh going through its death throes down there you know sure. um so it, it's good i mean i i think uh you know keeping your eye on the regional scene and aspects and who's coming up and stuff I, I feel like it's very important because it's that you can have guys in a big show now but you know as an as athletes you know you can only kind of hang around for a certain amount of time you know People move on with different careers, life stuff, you know, your body breaks down, you just want to retire, whatever the case may be. Sure. You always want to have a good farm system that you're constantly just working on because it's just, you know, as guys retire, you know, body breaks down, they decide they want to go into a completely different career, whatever the case may be. You know, as a management company, if all of your guys kind of phase out and, and leave, the game and stuff. If you don't have that next wave and that next wave, that next wave of guys to kind of step up and matriculate up into bigger shows and fill that void, you're kind of dead in the water. And I've seen that happen to people a lot over the years, but um, you know, so the regional scene plays a huge piece in that. And you know, I think uh, ever, I think the regional scene is probably in the best place it's ever been in Florida. 
Right. I, um, I, I would definitely agree with that. There's, there's only two, um, you know, th- f- things or people that are undefeated. It's John Jones and Father Time. Uh, that, that's it. If everyone yeah. else in the <laughs> MMA game loses sooner or later or breaks down or has to retire, that's it. John yeah. Jones and Father Time. Um, two questions, one kind of with exactly the direction we're going and, and one kind of the exact opposite. Name me one or two, uh, maybe a year ago, five years ago, whatever it was, right, that you saw him or her and you're like, wow, uh, in three years they're going to be a UFC champion contender ranked or in the ufc someone you know maybe an amateur at one and zero. you're like wow that's she or he is ufc bound so someone's super young and then definitely talk to uh, the people here at fight Benes. talk to the cream of the crop talk to uh the ufc fighters you have right now champions contenders uh to let the people know uh you know the talent pool that you guys are working with sure so as far as people that i may have seen years ago that you just kind of knew uh one person that really sticks out to me is uh, Sadiq Yusuf. Um, he's uh, training out of Team Lloyd Irvins. He actually uh, he actually fought Mike Davis on the Contender Series. He did, Mike um, Eastboy. And as I mean, Mike Davis himself is an absolute monster. Um, you know, that was I mean, Dean and I have talked about this multiple times. I mean, that's probably the best quality fight in Contender Peter's Series history. In, a hundred percent. Yes. Like, absolutely. I mean, Mike Davis is an absolute just wrecking machine. I mean, uh, for a while, I mean, no one wanted to fight that guy on the regional scene. And I mean, uh, that really sucked for him, I'm sure. But it's like, at the same time, I get it. I mean, like the dude's just <laughs> yeah. like, he's just one of those guys who's a destroyer. And I mean, I mean, honestly, I'll throw him in there too, right with Sadiq. But I mean, uh, specifically to Sadiq, I remember... <laughs> I saw his pro debut at Shogun Fights a couple of years back. And, um, you know, he, he was making, I mean, Sadiq had a great amateur career, had been running through tough guys. I mean, you know, Master Lloyd isn't going to let anyone from his gym go pro until he's pretty sure that not only are they going to be a solid pro, but they've got potential to go all the way and are going to be more than prepared. You know, I feel like some guys are in just this mad dash to go pro. Um, whether that's making money or just the idea of being pro or whatever. And I think some people neglect the work that needs to go into that. And, um, and once you go pro, you can't go back and, and some guys end up in some bad situations, but um, Sadiq was more than ready. And he fought a guy, Alvin Mercer, who was uh, very tough. Uh, already had like five or six pro fights himself. I think maybe some pro striking as well. And, um, you know, Sadiq just picked them apart. Uh, knocked him out, and when he dropped him that last time, he, you know he knew that the fight was over. And he goes and like looks towards the crowd and like does a little Harlem Shake real quick, and then turns <laughs> back towards his opponent and polishes him off with like another like two to three punches or something like that before the ref stopped it. And, I mean, it was just amazing, you know. Right, like, Mercer's never it, it fought a, again since that, brother. He's never fought again. No, I, I mean, it's, and I, yeah, you, know, you feel for the guy because right, it's, right. no one wants to end up on like the ass end of a highlight reel, you know, and that one just made the rounds like no one's business because it was just kind of such a sensational finish. Um, it wasn't just that he got the knockout, it's just the way he did it and just like the pure confidence to, you know, hit a nice dance move and then just, <laughs> you know, on your way down to polishing the guy off after you've laid him out. I mean, it's just, it, it was amazing. And I mean, I was, uh, I was there with Brian Hamper at the time and I was just like, yeah that dude's going to be in the UFC and kill it, you know, um, again, you know, three, he ended up being pretty right. Right, right. Uh, uh, dude, uh, three straight wins in the UFC. He's got a big, big fight at UFC 246 versus Andre. It's just uh, Sadiq, yeah. Uh, you thought 2019 was just, you know, rocket launcher for him. 2020 might, might be that top five and, you know, a top end contender year for Sadiq. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that one. Uh, just a complete monster, complete stud. Yeah, and I mean, you know, circling back, I mean, just to, you know, kind of highlight Mike Davis, too, because that's another kid that, you know, I'd seen him kind of, uh, you know, for a while slowly progressing on the regional scene just because he couldn't get fights and guys didn't want to fight him. Promotions he had maybe been fighting for in the past, just stuff wasn't sticking. And, you know, then it's like, you know, I I think sometimes, you know, fighters are are hesitant to commit to, you know, whether it be, you know, management or, you know, maybe signing a multi-fight agreement with a solid promotion or something, you know, like guys think like, okay, well, man, you know, I always want to have options and stuff, but it's like when, 
man, when you have a consistent promoter like Dean with Island Fights and stuff, I mean, right, like Dean Tool's right. an experienced dude. Like he clearly knows what it takes to, you know, get guys opponents and, and, and keep guys active and run good events. Um, you know, and then you saw Mike Davis go from like, OK, this kid looks like a total savage, but still pretty early in his career to like he just, you know, springboarded up and, and fought good guys and just kept taking guys out in brutal fashion. And, um, you know, now he's in the UFC coming off. I mean, probably one of the worst beatings I've ever seen handed to someone in the UFC. Right, right. You know, what a I was the pretty high, brutal. Yeah, the <laughs> highlight of UFC Tampa at the end of it well, you know, a lot of people thought, you know, you wanted to check. She was amazing, main event was awesome, but it's like one of those things years and years from now it's like everyone's like, dude, that was the event that Mike Beast Boy Davis like just clobbered Thomas Gifford for almost three rounds. That that, that just keeps on coming up. Um, yeah. And then kind of going back to your point, too, and, yeah, we we bring up Dean Tool probably more than he wants to on this show, right, um, all the time. And I'm just a, I'm a big fan of island fights. I just – I'm a big fan of seeing fighters like Mike Beast Boy Davis and Phil Rowe and Brock Weaver and Hannah Goldie and Christian Lawson and all these uh, – Jacob Killer Kilburn, all these fighters, right? Um, island fights 2019. Uh, they're all UFC bound. It's just – if that's the goal for these fighters on the regional scenes is to become UFC fighters and become ranked UFC guys, like Island Fights is like it's it's a highway. That's a natural pathway to go where you want to go. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, Dean is, is definitely kind of done his due diligence over the years and he, he grew his promotion organically. And, you know, now he's at a good point where he's, he's putting on a lot of good fights. I mean, you know, one of our guys, uh, Davison Ribeiro, fought Jacob Kilburn in one right. of his last fights. And, I mean, it, you know, props to Kilburn. I mean, Dragon had him in trouble, dropped him in the first round, like handily won the first round, and then Kilburn comes back out just undaunted and, you know, wins by a pretty crushing knockout in the second. You know, it's it's uh, it's uh, just good fights, you know, and especially when you're kind of at the end of a good run and, you know, you're looking to kind of, you know, get some good you know names on your record and everything like that i mean like dean's putting on good fights um you know you, you see it in some other places you know you get a guy who's 10 and 0 and you know he's fighting some dude who's you know four and 17 and yeah. you know it's like at, at a certain point that's just not going to do anything for you you know it's like you've got to prove that you know you can fight and beat good people um you know if you want to make a case that you know you're going to you know, be able to get into and, and do well in, you know, the UFC or Bellator or whatever the case may be. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, Dean, uh, you know, he, he's, he's putting on a great promotion. He's putting on good fights and, and um, you know, giving guys the tests that they need to be able to go up. And I mean, you know, it's like Mike Davis made his debut on crazy short notice, you know, against Burns and stuff, who's like one of the best grapplers in MMA. <laughs> yeah. But look what, look at what he did in his next fight with like, a real camp and like notice and stuff. I mean, he put an insane beating on one of the tougher dudes to come out of the regional scene in a long time. Because Gifford himself is ridiculously tough. Yeah, He's very good. He is. And um, we just talked to Gifford uh, literally just last week on the show. And the crazy thing is, and I I never do this because the guests are always right, David. Uh, but even Mike uh, <laughs> Davis on that Gifford dude, he only had six day notice. Um, and the crazy part is, we were at dinner with them it was a sunday night we're at red robin we go get ice cream later and uh monday morning i start hearing some things up in the tea leaves and i go to mike and he's like yeah this might happen because that was the saturday ufc tampa and it was going to be brock versus gifford that's right and yeah, that fell right. through and, so and literally brock, brock got had the uh pull for whatever reason right and then mike replaced them that's right you're yeah. right yep it was crazy. Six day notice yeah. fight. Um, but hey, he's down there at American Top Team now and he's staying ready all the time. He has a great camp and, you know, go down to that gym. It's just savages and killers like a Chase Batwell. Um, you know, all those weight classes, those featherweights and lightweights and uh, bantamweights. There's just an uh, uber amount of talent down there at ATT Coconut Creek. Yep. Um, but okay, keep on going. Um, if there's another young one, or if not, name me some of the studs. Name me uh, people that are, you know, absolutely like, oh wow, they're sucker punch. I didn't know that, you know. Well, I mean, I, I think uh, you know we we work with um, you know a lot of talented athletes. I'd say you know starting first on the women's side, actually, if you want to go from absolutely lowest lowest to highest, um, you know, we work with uh, Rose Nama Yunus. Um, worked with her for a very long time. Uh, you know, her and, and Brian Butler go way back to, you know, when she was even still an amateur, uh, you know, cause he, he'd worked with, uh, you know, Pat Barry since, 
you know, pretty close to the inception of Sucker Punch Entertainment back in the day. And then, wow, that's awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, then uh, we also work with, uh, you know, Wee Zhang, who's the, you know, women's strawweight champ in the UFC right now. And, uh, you know, she's an absolute monster. Uh, she just crushed Andrade in a way that no she, one else ever has. Right. And um, David, to real quick, um, that's one of sure. those ones, too. Um her first fight in the UFC, because I'm not going to be that guy. I, I didn't see what she did, you know, overseas, sure. right? So her first fight in the UFC, um, on the Fight Bananas website, I go, uh, that was my headline. She will be a future champion. Like, there's no doubt about it in my mind. I just saw the, dude, her passion, her, um, you know, her explosiveness, her, uh, you know, the energy, right? I'm like, future sure. UFC champ. Boom. Uh, literally was, what was it, 14 months, 16 months later, and she did have the gold. Yep. Uh, it was uh, from when she made her debut. I just pulled it up right now, August fourth, two thousand eighteen. Then she won the belt August thirty first, twenty nineteen. Wow, that that that's there you go. Uh, she and she could be. You ready for this one? Uh, probably could be a cap into your feather. She could be the biggest star in the UFC in twenty twenty. She could pull um, kind of what Georgie Masvidal did this year in twenty nineteen and just kind of take over the year. She could take over twenty twenty, uh, starting with the win over uh, Yuana, who's just like a legacy female fighter, you know, maybe ever. Um, if she wins Absolutely. that and she's got the overseas power, she's got a great look to her. She's got a lot of you know, uh, Tom Brady, Derek Jeter showing her a lot of love after her last win. She could be that mega superstar of twenty twenty, my man. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it's it's just, um, and also too, I mean, the the amount of the amount of impressions and and social media traffic that happened after she won that fight is just like on a scale that you really can't compare it to anything before. You know, it's just you've got, I mean, it was hundreds of millions, then eventually over a billion. Um, you know, different mentions on like Weibo, which is China's, you know, main like social media platform that they allow. And then, um, you know, other social media platforms as well, obviously. But I mean, yeah, it's just, the traffic is unreal. And, you know, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, just with with where she comes from and just the the kind of untapped market that China could be for the UFC. I mean, I, I think she could be huge. And, um, you know, it's uh, you got Masvidal holding it down in South Florida and, you know, traveling the world and <laughs> handing out beatings and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's the same with her, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, I, I really do think I'm not just saying that on the show. I've, she's been definitely a topic on the uh, podcast for the last probably two to three months. I really do think, for one, that is the best female fight the UFC can put on. I just love it's the new school versus old school. Uh, Yuana has such a great name to her. Uh, the, the the fighting style too inside the octagon. Sometimes you know uh, when you get to older veterans, sometimes their name has a little bit more platform than what they do inside the cage. Uh, no, not with Yuana, not with uh, Wei Lee. That's just going to be like one of those wow, you cannot miss fights. You cannot miss that fight if you're in the fight game. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, I think it's going to be great. And then, uh, you know, yeah, I, I'm de definitely looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to be a great fight. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going with, you know, our girl and stuff. Right. Uh, right. But, uh, you know, I, I think, I think it's a good fight, but I think with a, a win over Joanna and stuff, she's really going to kind of cement, you know, herself as to where she's at kind of at the top of the straw weight division and, um, you know, and even potentially the flyweight division in the future too. You never know. Right, wow! Get that champ, champ status. Uh, her and Amanda Nunes. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the thing to do nowadays. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, how about on the male side? How about the male side? Uh, even UFC or any organizations uh, throw out some of those uh, top end names for us. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, uh, aside from you know Wei Li Zhang and uh, you know Rose Nami Yunus and Carla Esparza and uh, you know a lot of our other longtime female clients, you know Rachel Ostevich. Ashley Evan Smith, Tracy Cortez, who just, you know, got into the UFC this year and is already making some waves and stuff. Uh, yes, you know, Jermaine nice. Deronde May, but on the, on the men's side, you know, I think, um, I mean, it, we're actually going down there. It's, it's only a couple hours from where we live, but, uh, Brian Butler and I both live in Richmond, Virginia, and Brian Hamper lives up in Maryland, but, you know, we've got, um, almost half a dozen guys on the UFC card that's coming up in Raleigh, North Carolina, but, um, you know, one of those guys who's a pretty, uh, you know, big name guy, one of the top European guys to, you know, matriculate into the lighter weight divisions uh, from the UK in a long time is Brett Johns. Uh, he's just been out for a long time due to injury, but, um, you know, he's, he's, 
you know, very, very good. I, you know, obviously we talked about Sadiq Yusuf, um, you know, earlier and, uh, you know, some, something to keep an eye on too, uh, on the UFC rally, rally card. A lot of people aren't as familiar with them, but at featherweight, uh, Nate Landwehr is making his UFC debut. Um, you know, Nate is a guy who is an absolute dog. Like there are plenty of guys who, you know, do the whole hashtag savage thing and, you know, whatever, I think that gets thrown around way too much. Um, but Nate Landwehr is an absolute savage, right, like right. total animal. Like look up some of his old interviews from early in his pro career. Like the guy's just, uh, the guy's just an animal, both in the cage and on the mic. He's awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't really have as much familiarity with him yet just because, you know, before he, you know, he's from a, you know, kind of smaller town in Tennessee. He went over to M1 Global and fought and beat nothing but extremely tough Russian guys took their featherweight belt successfully defended it um you know and it was just kicking ass fighting nothing but tough guys over there and uh you know recently signed with the UFC uh you know after he uh you know signed with us and stuff and then uh he's getting ready to make his debut and that, that's a guy another guy for people to watch out for is Nate Land where I think he's gonna um you know make a statement you know coming up in 2020 and just you know let more people know who he is. I mean, cause he's been fighting at a very high level for a while and he, he's very good. Um, That's we work awesome. with Paul Felder, who's both a, you oh. know, highly ranked lightweight fighter as well as the UFC commentator. Um, and, uh, you know, another guy that, uh, I think, uh, you know, deserves a lot of recognition right now is Doug Lima. Um, you know, one of the best in the world, brother, one of the oh, best yeah. in the world. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, because he's been fighting in Bellator and just for whatever reason, um, you know, for years and years, fans haven't given that the same level of, you know, street cred, respect, whatever you want to call it, as, you know, it would be if he was in the UFC. But, you know, the thing is, I mean, you know, he's, uh, you know, another sucker punch OG. I mean, uh, bef before even Brian Hamper and, and, and Brian Butler merged years and years ago, um, you know, Lima was working with, uh, you know, Brian Butler at, when he first founded the company. And, um, you know, it's uh, Doug Lima has been one of the top guys in the UFC outside of the UFC for a long time. Um, just, you know, he's beat a who's who of opponents and stuff. And, you know, it's like rec more recently, you know, he won that million dollar tournament you know, for the welterweight Grand Prix in Bellator and just, um, yeah, Rory McDonald, the, MVP, Larkin, uh, Paul Daly, yeah. Bon Saunders, like, come on guys. Like there's sooner or later, you have to give the man a little bit of respect. He is definitely, um, yeah. one of the biggest yeah. dark horse fighters in mixed martial arts period. Uh, he's, in, yeah. he should be on all top 10 lists across the world. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a, you know, Doug Lee was a very respectful guy. He's kind of an understated dude. He's never going to be a guy who's out running around and, you know, slapping old men in bars and doing, you know, crazy <laughs> stuff. You know, it's, he, he's just, he's a good guy. He's a family man. Um, you know, and, and he goes in and puts the work in day in and day out. But I mean, just beatings that he's put on some of these people, like even the first fight with Rory and stuff, that was a very contentious decision. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't really see, uh, the fight going the way it was ruled ultimately. And then the, the second time he fought Rory, I mean, that was just a beat down. Um, you know, and then Rory himself is one of the best dudes out there still in the weight class and was, you know, at the top in the UFC for a very long time. It's, uh, you know, I, man, I, I think now I have a hard time seeing, uh, I have a hard time seeing people, uh, taking the welterweight strap and, you know, even now going forward into 2020, potentially the middleweight strap, uh, from, uh, from Douglas anytime soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, then, you know, we've, we've got, you know, other, you know, big name guys too on our roster as well. Um, you know, it's at, uh, middleweight, you know, we've got, uh, you know, Brendan Allen's a guy who was, I mean, dude, at the top of the regional scene at middleweight for years, you know, but it's just several times he was right on the cusp, I thought of, you know, getting into a bigger show and, you know, then he would fight, you know, the toughest guys out there like Eric Anders and other stuff. And, you know, that's a guy who's battle tested and stuff. He's gotten into the UFC now. He's yeah, he's waves. at a Rufus sport, right, Dave? Yep, yep, okay, he's out okay. of Rufus Sport. Right. Yep, he's uh, one of our guys that we've got up there. And then, uh, you know, also Punahele Soriano, um, you know, out of Extreme Couture in Vegas. He's coming off a crushing knockout. Love that his UFC debut. Love he, he's going to be a problem. Yeah, I, I was um, there at his uh, contender series fight. I was there 
Um, uh, you ready for this one? Uh, sitting next to Dean Tool, and uh, it, it just he's listening to his corner. Uh, he's putting on his show, and we look at each other, and we're like, "Yeah, UFC stud." Like, just absolutely no question about it. UFC stud. Oh yeah, I mean, when he was coming up, um, a lot of guys didn't want to fight him, but he was down to fight anybody. I mean, it's just uh, uh, okay, cool, six and one. You know, experienced pro. You've only got a couple of fights. This guy's a black belt. You know, uh, as uh, the late Kimbo Slice said, you know, maybe on some extra vitamins and supplements. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Puna didn't care. You know, he the, the, he didn't care how much more experienced guys had, bigger, stronger, more credentialed, whatever. He just went out and just absolutely wrecked guys in the first round pretty much every time, just was murdering people, you know. Um, I, I think Puna is going to be a problem and stuff. I, I bet uh, – I bet Dean was wearing some pretty uh, fresh shoes out, out there at that uh, contender episode, though, if I if I know him as well as I think I do. Louis Vuitton uh, yellow <laughs> alligator. True story. <laughs> it's a nice. true story. My man. <laughs> I got the picture. I got the proof. Uh, we had fun time out there in Vegas. Uh, it was a good time. Um, kind of hitting what you were saying. Uh, you Okay, so you talked. You threw out Douglas Lima, uh, absolutely sure. top ten guy. Um, Bellator just had a show out there. Uh, it was kind yeah. of a little bit of Bellator versus Ryzen. And, you know, yep. and that's, you know, me and you have been talking for the last week or two, but then we kind of got connected tonight about, uh, you know, a lot of people have been putting out there. We threw it up on the website, fightbananas.com, if Bellator fought UFC. And if we had a mm-hmm. mega epic five pay per view fight card, and you know, let's, sell, let's sell the points out, let's sell out the Madison Square Garden, let's make all, everyone sure. rich. Uh, and I loved your card. Um, I've, we've had five UFC fighters. We had five regional great fighters. We've had Bellator fighters all put in their their cards. Um, I kind of want to go through mine, go through yours, and just it, it's kind of funny because we're super super similar. Some uh, you might won. Uh, you might have won. I love how you're savages. Uh, you just you have a fight card of um, you know fighters' dreams on it. It's one of those things. Mine's more a little bit uh, name recognition, but we'll go back and forth. You ready, my man? Sure. So on mine, I did. Um, I don't know if you. Uh, I am a all in Georgie Masvidal guy. Uh, fight bananas. We're all in. It oh, was his yeah. year. Yeah, absolutely. So I I had him versus Lima. Um, I just think that's a fight, uh, a fighter's dream. It's got the name recognition. It's uh, you can't argue the two best welterweights in the world. Uh, they're just that great. Um, Lima and Masvidal. Can't go wrong with that, right? Oh yeah. I mean that's. <laughs> You, you could make a kind of obscure argument that uh, maybe uh, Masvidal has the real belt at welterweight. Yeah, uh, you're, <laughs> you're 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 kind of speeching to the choir. There's no arguments here. We're like I said, we're all in with Mozzie. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Our card and my card, we uh, your card and mine, we both have Cyborg. Uh, you know, she's definitely making a huge splash over there for Bellator. I got her fighting Amanda Nunes too. Uh, you have her fighting against uh, Ronda Rousey, WWE superstar. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, love I, it. I, I remember before uh, yeah, Rousey's that... coach, you know, Edmund, he was like, oh, man, that's the fight we want. And, you know, he was saying that Ronda could have been a pro, you know, high-level pro boxer, or, you know, Muay Thai fighter as well. And uh, I remember for a while he was talking about uh, her fight in Cyborg. And I was just like, man, I, you know, I'd like to see that happen and see uh, – Oh yeah, see who's, see who's right. <laughs> and the UFC, or now you know with Bellator, that that's sure. like one of those UFC three hundreds. Any time if that fight ever came to fruition, that's the main event of any big major card ever. It just has huge uh, oh, yeah. history. Um, so uh, and kind of a sleeper fight that I put together and kind of kind of got some love on the social media platforms. I put MVP versus Conor McGregor. Um, for one, the weigh-in would just be spectacular. So that's that. And then two, just both of their styles and you know, it's standing up. You're going to see crazy, crazy, uh, stand up tactic and war. Uh, I just love that fight. Um, and then, yeah, I think, uh, oh yeah, I ended up with Ryan Bader versus John Jones too. Uh, I think Ryan Bader might be one of those guys the last five years that people aren't giving the recognition to. He's, um, you know, because he was on that cuffs in UFC. You know, he would win two, three, four, and then lose one to one of those top end guys. And now, you know, to light heavyweight. Now he's the heavyweight champion over there in Bellator. So I would love to see Ryan Bader in 2020 version versus John Jones. Um, 
Okay, let me give you yours. I got to give you credit where credit's due. That's why you get paid the big bucks, David. Um, you have Michael Chandler versus Justin Gaethje. Like, that's insane. Like, I love that fight. Um, <laughs> you and me texted. You uh, you gave us Paul Daly versus Mike Perry. My exact reaction back to you was, if you look up war in the dictionary, you can see that fight. That's the fight you yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, you- and you got Patricio versus Sadiq. I love that. Um, you know, Sadiq on the card. It's just a stacked card. You got James Gallagher versus Brett Johns. Yeah, I, you know, I, James Gallagher is a dude that uh, a lot of people would maybe uh, find his upbringing uh, as far as how he's been cultivated and the guys he's been fighting a little interesting. Um, you know, he uh, talked a, a whole bunch of trash and stuff and then our guy ricky bendejas gave him the sweet chin music and uh <laughs> you know I, I think that was awesome um but i i think you know it's uh gallagher still is, is developing you know a pretty you know nice little record and stuff and i, I think you know if, if you could just do it you know you've got a big uh trash talking irishman versus uh you know badass uh you know welsh uh, gypsy dude you know who's, who's wow. also a ginger and you know, pretty, uh, you know, good fighter and stuff. I think that, uh, that would just be an interesting, uh, fight to see. And then, you know, like you mentioned before, the last one I put was, uh, the cyborg versus like Ronda Rousey, just kind of maybe out of a sense of like morbid curiosity, just kind of <laughs> like, uh, and like the old silent films when like the guy's tied to the train tracks and everyone's looking, but they can't look away. <laughs> uh, you know, some, yeah. s- something maybe like that. <laughs> all, all those gifts of like the, the the kids running close to the edge of the mountain, like you should walk away or not watch it, but you always watch it. There's like a ball that's rolling off the mountain, and the kid somehow always you know stays on it. But uh, yeah, you cannot look away. That's something. I'm t- it would be one of the most watched um, you know fights in the history of the fight game. It just would. Rousey versus Cyborg. That's incredible. I, I feel like for a while. Um... You know, with Cyborg and stuff, I mean, obviously, you know, Amanda Nunez is just so good. Um, you know, for a while, it's like Cyborg is just for years. It was it's almost like watching Tyson fights and stuff. It's like, you know that it's probably going one way. Cyborg's a heavy favorite. You know she's, you know, just going to brutally finish, you know, who, who she's fighting. But you just, you still watch it just out of like a sense of like morbid curiosity and just like you know it's it's still interesting to a lot of people to watch you know even if you kind of know that it's it's going to end pretty brutally for the opponent you know right right oh man uh david arvello follow him on instagram at david underscore arvello uh we'll definitely put that out there sucker punch um dude i I can talk literally for hours and hours uh with you anytime uh we'll definitely next time like i said we'll get a skype um you know i gotta get my hair on the show that's just kind of that's how we get that's how we get 30 percent of our ratings uh so but this time old-fashioned old school phone call um i'm gonna give you the floor the platform anything you want to talk about um i know you're talking about the cowboy series uh any fighters or anything you know coming up with you in 2020 i just give you the absolute floor take it away my man well, um, Brian Hamper and I, uh, from Sucker Punch Entertainment, we also, uh, we also work with, uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone and, uh, you know, we, we help run a uh, cowboy fight series, uh, with him. He basically wanted to start a promotion, uh, and kind of provide a platform, uh, for guys coming up, you know, high level, you know, top amateur prospects, guys like, you know, Chase Boutwell and, um, you know, Carlos Martinez, uh, you know, Jason Willingham and some of these other guys coming on like top, top prospects, you know, in the country coming up as amateurs, you know, getting ready to go pro. And he kind of wanted to provide a good springboard for them, give them a platform to showcase themselves, um, you know, and then, you know, start their pro careers and everything as well. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, one thing that you see sometimes on the regional scene is that, you know, guys get to a certain point, even as amateurs now. And some people kind of have like a misguided opinion on what that's for. And, um, you know, guys don't want to fight other tough guys as amateurs. And, you know, so a lot of the fights that we're able to put on, like we just had our, our year, year, the end, year end show on uh, the 21st, you know, at a 15 fights loaded full of talent, um, you know, on some of these smaller amateur promotions you know some guys won't fight each other they won't fight each other unless there's a belt or you know, there's all these reasons that come up but you know 
on cowboy fight series and stuff like we don't give easy fights you know we're putting together scraps and, and guys just go in there and it's just something different i mean you know, we've seen it you know guys that get in the cage and crowds hyped up they just kind of look at cowboy and he's sitting there just uh you know with a you know big old lip in and you know <laughs> slant, enjoying some budweiser and stuff and i mean these, these guys just get amped up i mean i've seen some of the gnarliest fights over this past year amateur or, or pro in our cage um you know but we, we just like to give a you know a good platform for guys and you know it's a it's a good way to kind of you know see you know the guys who are going to be kind of you know your top talents coming up and you know years going forward and um you know that's kind of a big thing we've been working on at, you know in 2020 we're going to start you know traveling and stuff as well uh, to some different places and um you know i, I think i'm pretty excited for that but you know that's that's a big thing we've been working on and um you know uh we've uh you know, I, I think that Cowboy Fight Series is, you know, this year goes on and, you know, going forward, I think that's going to turn into, you know, a pretty big platform for guys to, you know, finish out their amateur careers and get fights. Because that, that's something that I think a lot of guys sleep on is that, you know, I've seen guys with these perfectly manicured amateur records, you know, right, right, fought softer opposition. And those guys, I've seen plenty of those guys end up as just upside down pros. And, I've seen guys who took scraps who maybe took some amateur losses, but they went pro and, you know, they've been tested, they've been in wars, they've been in a fight and got their nose busted and, you know, came back and won and, you know, just uh, all these other things that happen, you know, I've seen guys who took some losses, who took a lot of tough scraps potentially as amateurs turn into very good pros, you know, UFC, Bellator, you name it, you know, I, it's, like your amateur career is about testing yourself. I mean, Absolutely. it's like, that's the equivalent of like, it's you play college. high school football for yes. four years. Then you want to stay playing high school. And then you right. want to go after a couple more years of playing in high school against high school level opposition. And then all of a sudden you want to catch a pass over the middle in the NFL. That's probably going to be pretty bad for you. Oh, absolutely. I love that you said that. I, I'm, you know, on this, that's just been one of the threads. We talked to so many amateur fighters, and it's like, if you're an amateur fighter, of course, you, you know, you don't want to go and, and get beat up. Of course, that's none of these fighters' dream, but you sure. want to fight a Muay Thai guy. You want to fight a wrestler. You want to fight a yeah. heavy hand over the right. You want to just test yourself in every little thing, and then you want to fight one of those guys, two or three of them at the end, that has three or four of those things combined. You're like, okay, I can put it together when you turn pro, because as soon as you turn pro, all that shit's gone. All that, all the yeah. records, all that shit's gone. But what you do have is the the knowledge, and you got the the metal, and you got the grit from what those amateur fights gave you. It, it makes yeah. perfect sense, brother. I love it. The cowboy fights. You can follow them also on cowboy fights on the IG. A uh, good platform right there. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell guys all the time. I'm just like, dude, I I'll, I'll take a tough and battle tested eight and four amateur any day of the week over some dude who's you know eight no. But you look and he's been fighting nothing but debuts and just lesser opposition that, you know, he's just heavily favored and didn't really ever get challenged. Most of the time, those guys end up in a very deer in the headlight situation once they go pro. And, you know, sometimes that creates a hole that's just impossible to kind of dig out from. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I just think that, man, when you're an amateur, test yourself. You know, like it's like you said, you know, get those different looks and opponents you know, learn that you, you know, you can get in a war and come back and, you know, and win you're, you know, like have those experiences. So then when, you know, I mean, even, you know, a guy like Mike Perry or just other guys that have come up, you know, from, you know, your area and stuff, you know, it's like those guys fought some tough guys coming up. Brock Weaver you know, is they, one off the top they, of my yeah, head. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Wars. I mean, guy, Absolute guy, yeah. wars. <laughs> Brock Weaver is like a junkyard dog if there ever was one. <laughs> I mean that in the best way possible. I mean, that's, that, you know, he's fought a ton of tough guys gotten in some serious wars and stuff but you know that's a dude that you know if he gets clipped or you know does a stanky leg a little bit or just, you know whatever <laughs> like he's not gonna mentally crumble you know he's probably gonna smile at the dude and tell him to come on you know like it's just uh yeah Keep that, that's what you want you know um that's you know that, that's kind of some other stuff we've been working on and other than that just uh you know now that we're past uh you know stuff thankfully slowed down a, a little bit on uh christmas eve and you know, Christmas and stuff, you know, we're uh, hanging out with some family and everything, but, uh, you know, stuff is starting to heat up. You know, we're booking a lot of our people, you know, for 
you know, fights going into the first quarter and stuff. It's funny because January tends to be a month that's pretty slow on the regional scene for obvious reasons. Just, you know, it's close to the holidays, whether it's making weight or ticket sales or whatever. It's just not going to be the same. Right. Um, so in January, we have a ton of clients fighting, uh, but it's just all UFC fights. <laughs> and then the, uh, the, the, you know, it started February and onwards and stuff. The regional scene starts to pick back up, too. But, uh, you know, this stuff is year round. And I always say like the between Thanksgiving and Christmas and a lot after Christmas, it's if it's kind of an off season, but not really. And otherwise, this stuff is just, you know. As you know, it's just nonstop, man. It is, man. The fight game does not stop. It's uh, 24-7, 365. Uh, my main man, last thing, what's the best way if fighters uh, hear this or other you know, agents or something like want to get their fighters on those cards, the Cowboy Series card, or maybe want to talk to you about Sucker Punch? Maybe they're a 8-4 uh, and four amateur. Uh, they've been through that medal, and they want to get uh, represented. What's the best way to contact you, get to you, get to Sucker Punch, Cowboy, all that stuff? Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, as far as, you know, anything Sucker Punch related and getting a hold of me, just feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is David underscore Arvello. Um, you know, same with, uh, you know, Brian Hamper and stuff. He's uh, Brian Hamper on Instagram. Uh, and, you know, uh, Brian Butler is just at Sucker Punch. Ant. But, uh, yeah, just for any, uh, you know, fighters that want to, you know, reach out to me and stuff, just reach out to me there. Just uh, David underscore Arvello. And then for Cowboy Fight Series, you can just DM us on Instagram and, um, you know, we'll – uh you know, as you do our database and stuff. And, you know, we, we, we plan on traveling more in 2020 and, you know, we kind of have a home base here in Northern Virginia for a variety of reasons, but it's just a, it's a good place to put on fights. And in Virginia, uh, they allow full rules for amateurs. So there you go. Um, you know, knees to the head, elbows, you know, just pro rules and stuff. Those are allowed here for amateurs. And I kind of think that's important, especially for guys who are on the cusp of going pro. That's just like one last thing that I'll, kind of touch on is that i've seen guys come from other states before where they have just several sets of very restrictive amateur rules that guys have to like progress through and um you see some guys that go pro and then you see them over the course of sometimes even the first several or more pro fights they're still fighting under that amateur rule set essentially because you spent you know potentially years fighting you know under a more limited rule set as an amateur you kind of get used to that and uh, I've seen several times, you know, guys just, um, you know, they never threw elbows. They never threw a head kick, you know, in, in a fight. Like in North Carolina, for example, head kicks in MMA for amateurs are illegal. So Gosh, that's crazy, he's never right? thrown or had to defend a head kick after years of competition. You know, you've never been hit with an elbow before. You've never thrown them. Um, you know, and I've seen elbows and other stuff just kind of snatch the soul out of dudes sometimes because guys just – uh you know, has been training for years, but I've never trained it or never really been exposed to it either. So that's kind of another big reason why we are kind of based here in Northern Virginia is that, you know, fighting on a CFS show is meant for people who want to go pro and really make a go at it. So we want guys to be able to fight with pro rules. Right. It, imagine in college quarterback, the Clemson quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, uh, beautiful arm, can just sling it all over the place. But then, you know, he's getting blitzed and he's trying to get out of the pocket, but he's not allowed to run 67 yards for a touchdown versus Ohio State. It just doesn't make sense. It's these guys want to be pros. They're amateurs. You got to let the man kick. Uh, that, that's part of the game. It's part of the fight game. And it's just uh, I think that's a great point by you. Um, last thing on your Instagram, man. I love it. It's a great follow. Like I said, David underscore Arvello. Uh, one of your posts a couple weeks ago. I love it. Uh, good men do exist. We're just ugly. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great shit yeah, right yeah. there. That's uh, you know, <laughs> shout out, shout out to my wife and stuff. She's a champ. You know, I, <laughs> I, I met her. I was already decently tatted up. You know, I've always had a beard. You know, I keep it kind of trimmed nowadays and stuff. But in the past, I had like a pretty much like a foot long beard many years ago. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm even more tatted up now. Got two full, you know, sleeves working on leg sleeves now, you know, do the back and everything last and stuff. And, um, you know, I told her when I met her, I'm like, Hey, like I am only going to get from a traditional viewpoint, more <laughs> ugly from here on out. So FYI, and she's cool with it, you know? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a good guy. Love my wife, love being married and stuff. But, uh, you know, my wife is, a is a, definitely a champ for, uh, 
letting me get as ugly as possible. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you're doing good, my man. That second house when you buy her uh, in the Caribbean, uh, they'll make up for everything. She's like, oh, I love you. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you know, you got a big, uh, big tatted up, uh, you know, kind of rough looking husband and stuff, but I have a second house in Thailand. You know, I think at that point everyone's happy. So, <laughs> <laughs> my man, uh, David Arvello, thank you so much uh, coming on the show. Short notice too. Uh, we appreciate you very much, uh, man. Just continued success. I cannot wait. We'll definitely be talking very soon. First quarter 100%. 2020. I'll talk to you right before UFC 246. We'll go all in, Cowboy Connor. We'll go all in with that. And uh, my man, I appreciate you. We'll talk to you real soon. Yeah, absolutely. All right, brother. All right, guys. What a great show, man. David Arvello, uh, we talk about it all the time. We usually like that 20, 26-minute sweet spot. Oh, when you have gold, when you just have absolute content gold, you just let it run. You let it run. Wow. David Arvello, Sucker Punch Entertainment. Uh, a lot about cowboy fights there at the end, cowboy series. Just great, great content, great stuff. Huge year for him coming up. Um, Wei Li, Sadiq. Oh, Paul Felder, holy crap, Thug Rose getting back in that octagon. A lot of great stuff, uh, that UFC Raleigh show. We'll maybe talk to him right before then. Uh, and like I said, we'll do a little Skype. We'll, we'll definitely get in hold of our man, David Arvello. All right, guys, we're going to close it down, and we never close it down without thanking our sponsors first and foremost. Let's give a big shout-out to Mako Tech Mouthguards. Check them out, guys. Mako Tech underscore Mouthguards. They just had a great show at uh, Island Fight 61. They had a couple uh, new amateur fighters on there. Uh, they got Brock Weaver was in the building. Jacob Killer Kilburn was in the building. So Island Fight 61, Mako Tech Mouthguards. Hell of a show, hell of a company. Um, definitely get with them. And Still Nutrition. And Still Nutrition has been with us since day one. Nothing but uh, tons of love to them. Uh, check them out at The Real and Still on Instagram. And, or just go on their website, guys. And Still Nutrition. I, uh, I take the supplements every single day. Wow. There you go, guys. And give a big, big last shout out Space Coast Botanicals. Love, love, love their stuff. Check them out at SpaceCoastBotanicals.com. Check them out on the IG as well. Wow iHeartRadio, go get it. Subscribe, download Apple Podcasts, but iHeartRadio, that's where it's all at. And of course, subscribe to the Fight Bananas YouTube channel. Continue success and stay bananas.